Last week, the Overwatch League preseason kicked off, and I did an analysis video. Now you all seem to enjoy it, so let's keep them coming. Not too fast, though, because they only played like four days worth of games, and the actual league doesn't start until January, so we're going to try to pace ourselves out here so we don't run out of account in time. But today, we have a fantastic game, I think. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and today we're doing the Soul Dynasty versus Houston Outlaws game on Noombani. Now this was actually a really cool game, really, really cool. I thought that this game particularly really showed off the uh, meta variation and sort of the diversity that Overwatch could have when played in a really optimal type of way. So, boom, let's look at the team comps. Now the Outlaws are actually running kind of a cool strat, but we've sort of talked about this before, where we have the Torbjorn here on defense in the support slot, Solo Anna healing very strong on Numbani, Anna's incredibly strong in the first point healing on Numbani, and then they have a little Orisa Roadhog combo, you have to have the Soldier, and you kind of have to sort of have the Diva. So that's what Outlaws are running. Definitely pretty cool and actually worth uh, having a video of its own, but this particular time we'll be talking about the Seoul Dynasty, the Koreans, and they're just playing a single healer, single support on attack, which is a little bit, we haven't really talked about that as much. So they're just running the one Mercy, played by Toby, on attack here. Let's uh, take a look at why. So we'll just watch this first push, but in the meantime, you can also notice the rest of their composition. They have triple DPS here. They have Farah, Soldier, and Genji, with their support player, Ru Jae Hong, who normally is their Zenyatta or their Ana or something like that. He's playing Soldier. He's right here on the screen. For their two tanks, they have Miro and Zumba. So basically, they're replacing their support here with Soldier. So here we are in beautiful Numbani. Let's take a look at how this point is kind of different or maybe unique in how it works. So right here, we can see that we have quite a few entrances. We have one, technically, if someone had mobility, they could hop up here for two, three, four, five. Wow, the attackers have a lot of ways in. And um, I mean, we could even continue to go around and see that there's this back area, right? You can go in that door. So we have a potential for an incredibly hectic game in the first part of Numbani here. Now, the more hectic and chaotic and split up your fight becomes, and, you know, splitting up is another factor because we have this, lots of little pockets, lots of little pockets that could potentially be isolated from the fight, right? So the more isolated all of your players are, the worse supports and healers become because everyone's off doing their own 1v1s or 2v2s or whatever, and your healers can't efficiently heal anyone who needs to be healed. So that is why the Koreans are deciding, well, these Koreans at least, we have lots of Koreans in the Overwatch League, but that's why Seoul specifically decides to go for this. And you can see over here, Fleeta just takes out Jake, boom, gone. These pickoffs are very common when you have compositions like this, divey sort of compositions on Numbani, especially when the other team only runs one healer as well. So we see Jaehong on Soldier over here with his partner Diva just sort of being by themselves. And then we have a Genji over there, Fleeta, like way off screen. Fleeta with Miro jumping off over there. Toby is with Weekeed by themselves. So the idea is to isolate. Notice the Ana is here with the Torbjorn. Isolate them from the players over there. And it's very strong here on Numbani because of how the map works. And we can now see that Rockus is completely by himself. And so just slowly, one by one, Sol is able to pick off all of the outlaws. So they'll take point number one. Now, let's take a look. So they're going to stay on this, by the way. They're going to keep Toby on Mercy solo. And Jaehong is going to stay on Soldier. Let's take a quick look at the second part of Numbani to see why maybe they would want to stick with it. All right. So here we are on the second part of Numbani, and we can see that it has actually a lot of similarities to the first point. If we take a look from the defender's perspective, there are quite a few different areas that the attackers can come from. They can come from around the back, back there, front, through here, up here. They can come from around, if we tilt the camera. They can come in here, out this door, um, yeah, there's another door over here. So it's insane how many different areas that the attackers can come from. Plus, once again, we see this very segmented type of style. 
we can have this a uh, high ground that's isolated from the low ground we have these rooms another room we have over here if we tilt the camera once again we have another isolated type of area back here that's covered by lots of things so uh plus we have all these cars the bus breaking it all up very very difficult to keep a cohesive six-man unit all together so healers become more attractive to run something like a soldier another really self-sufficient type of dps hero so let's see how it goes now it's going to take a little while for the dynasty to actually get to that part of the map we were talking about i didn't talk about this very first section right outside of point a because uh yeah fleeta he just thinks he's in a little bit less danger than he actually is in he actually uh is in quite a bit of danger raucus is looking at him on zenyatta everyone's looking at him muma actually winds up finishing him off so fleeta winds up going down very very early on now this is not something that they were expecting now this first part of numbani is actually very bad for solo support. If you want to push out in this direction, well, there's really nowhere to go. I mean, yeah, we have this room over here, so you can be a bit split, but usually the, the defenders will stand around this area, and then you just have to push into them. So you have like one additional way, maybe if you can get there, probably not two additional ways, but this is much more, you can see, of a straight up fight than the other areas of Numbani. It's mostly just going to be you, them, Clash in the middle somewhere around here. This is generally where you see the full 6v6 team fight happen in Numbani. And this is something that would be very good for multiple supports. You know, it, it, it's very good for those team fight oriented strategies. So the Outlaws having swapped off to Zenyatta Mercy, doing really well. But Fleeta with a blade comes in and gets a double kill. Now, uh, because Jake died and Coolmat died, it's very, it's surprisingly, as always, surprisingly hard to recover from losing anyone here on Numbani. If we just uh, rewind a couple seconds here, we can see it's very split up. We have players fighting up here, we have players fighting in here, so it's very split up. And now our individual matchups are going to work really well. Soldier, pretty good against Tracer, right? Tracer, who can go and deal with the Zenyatta. Genji, who is pretty okay against Soldier, he can actually go and fight him in a straight up fight and then of course the tanks to support all the while so here we're going to see that uh in they come wikied immediately goes and tries to do stuff with the back line clockwork has to stop him fleeta in the meantime manages to find a cutout diva and really good job by the way uh you know really good job here this slash is sick boom gets him before he can get back in the mech uh over here we see clockwork get crossed off the map by jay hung uh, once again, Soldier, good matchup there. Good matchup there. So they'll push through. Now, let's take a look at this last part of Numbani. And we can see that once this is much more straight up, this is very much of a team fight oriented type of area. We can see that there's pretty much just one way. This is going to be a big team fight. Now, yes, there is this area up here, but generally it's a mistake if you're just randomly caught out up here by yourself. Um, oftentimes you'll have a lot of people to support you up here if you're a defender. And usually the fight happens around this area. And once you get past that, it's pretty much, yeah, just completely wide open space. Yeah, there's some side flanky type of routes. But overall, it's going to be a big 6v6 team fight. There's no way around that. So the solo support composition, not so good. Doesn't really work as much anymore. That's why we're seeing that the Dynasty uh, want to swap off of it as soon as possible. Now, I said that this game really, I thought, showed off the potential for diversity in Overwatch. People generally think of Overwatch meta as this like monolith. It really doesn't change. You either, you know, mirror match type of thing. And that has actually historically been what it is. Either everyone plays triple tank or everyone plays dive or whatever. But we are, we're going to see a lot of really cool things coming from Soul Dynasty and also the Outlaws too. But like I said, we're just going to focus on one team at a time here. So here's what I'm talking about as far as diversity goes. Dynasty will swap off again to really old school. Not quite old school yet. Toby's still on the mercy. But um, it's getting pretty old school, man. <laughs> Clockwork picks off Wikied, which really sort of uh, sets a, a nasty tone for it. He also takes out Fleeta as well. But uh, this is straight up triple tank. Triple tank right here. We have the soldier with with Roadhog, Zarya, win, uh, Reinhardt. Now Fleeta's like, oh wait, that's right. Roadhog's not good. So they swapped off to D.Va. But still, the same sort of type of concept. And actually, Toby pretty soon spoiler alert toby is going to swap off to the lucio as well now this is literally old school we have jay hong on anna 
Toby on Lucio. No mercy in the match. Fleeta will eventually decide what he's going to freaking play and play uh, Tracer. So now, Dynasty in overtime need to win one more team fight, but they pretty much win. Like, if we take a look at this, they have put themselves in winning position here just based off of team composition alone. That's it. They just win the game. Like, there is no way unless Dynasty plays the worst team fight of their life and Outlaws play the best team fight of their life that they ever lose this. You know, we have a Zarya ultimate, Graviton. We have a Reinhardt Earth Shatter. Barrier will be coming up this fight as well. And uh, they even have the combo here with the Graviton and the, the Sticky Bomb from Tracers. But you can see that this is a really cool area in that it's very wide open. It's very easy. Um, like I said, I, I don't know. I don't know about that specific ultimate, but theoretically it could have been really good. Still, um, like I said, either Dynasty had to play the worst team fight of their lives and Out or Outlaws had to play the best. And uh, we see Miro ulting. Did he, did he ult nothing? Did he ult nothing? Let's let's go back and take a look at it. He ulted. <laughs> okay, he ulted uh, the Mercy. It was hard to see because the white outline, but he he did ult the Mercy there. So Miro got someone. He he got the no ultimate, no res, Mercy. So actually, between Zumba throwing out a, a weird graviton and Miro throwing out a weird Earthshaker, um, Dynasty actually lose this fight. Just kidding, they don't. Outlaws step off the point. <laughs> um, yeah, I was shocked when I when I saw this. Actually, this was this was funny. If we take a look at what could have or should have happened here, we still have. So all we have left here, all we have left is Fleeta. On well, I'll use the hero names. We just have Tracer, Lucio, and Reinhardt. That's it. Weekeeds up here as well, uh, or not up there? Where is we? Weekeeds, Weekeeds somewhere. I don't know where he. Oh, he's up there. Okay, Weekeeds up there. So, yeah, the Dynasty have something, but they have no ultimates left. They still need to fight through a Diva Suit and Clockwork on his Tracer, who's about to have full health, with a Sticky Bomb, with still a Soldier up there, with Muma basically respawned already. Now, there's no healers, but um, it's pretty. It's, this is pretty, looking pretty rough here. This is looking pretty rough. I think just a little bit of pressure under Weekeed to get him off. And suddenly, I, th I think the Outlaws could have held this pretty easily. Despite coming in with such a big disadvantage in terms of, you know, they had to fight through Graviton, Earth Shatter, uh, Barrier, all that stuff. So the reason why, there was a reason, guys. It wasn't just because the Outlaws decided they didn't want to win anymore. It's because Clockwork came in and he threw a Sticky Bomb down. Uh, he's gonna, yeah, so he threw a Sticky Bomb down. And then to avoid himself dying to his own Sticky Bomb, he blinked back. And then, so he literally he literally zoned himself out with his own sticky bomb. So that, that's what happened there, guys. I thought that this game was just silly enough and just insightful enough because of the Dynasty's cool, interesting team composition choices to show off. I hope you enjoyed it. In fact, in this last one, they even had, you know, the solo support with the, uh, the Torbjorn. They had all the stuff going. Same thing you sort of saw with the Outlaws. But overall, this was just a really fun, cool, interesting, unique game. And uh, I'm not going to show the second part. You can see the second part yourself by going to overwatchleague.com and checking out the VODs. Just click on the video tab up above. So I hope you all enjoyed. I think I'm going to start trying to do VOD reviews again. So I stopped because I found that I had sort of gone over everything. Like people just kept sending me the same problems. But now that we've had a few months to settle in, a few months for the community to get better, I think maybe the problems will start to be a bit different. The the situations will be a bit more unique we're in a different meta as well so uh feel free to send me your vod reviews skyline ow at gmail.com send a short description with what hero you're playing in the title and uh yeah send it to me we'll do some more vod reviews it's gonna be pretty cool never forget to stay positive and have a great day all right i'll see you guys next time